I just got off of that train from Bamberg to Berlin. This is the Berlin main train station. It's huge. We're just on the edge. So now I'm gonna try to find a local train to the zoo area. Now I'm three flights up from where my train came in. This place is huge and it is confusing, um, but I'm starting to figure it out. And I did ask a nice young lady um, and I think I know where I'm going. I'm going to the S, S-Bahn and gate 16 or S7 to the zoo. I just exited the train station. I'm gonna try to find my hotel all on my own. <laughs> And I'm using that old church because Kaiser Wilhelm is my beacon. I am actually really proud of myself because I don't have any internet service, so I can't do like Google Maps to the hotel. But I did do some research before I left and I knew from the main train station I needed to come to the zoological gardens exit of the train. And when the train came in, I saw this off in the distance and I knew that this was the direction I needed to exit from the train to get to my hotel. And if my research serves me correct, I'll follow the street until there's an option to turn left and I'll make that left turn. We'll see how I do. So far, so good. The elephant gates were on my directions when I looked up how to get here when I was back in the US. So I just came from that street down there, crossing in front of the elephants. Then I'll be going down here. And here's the statue of Alexander von Humboldt. And straight ahead with the black awning is my hotel. Going to show you my hotel room. 815. Well, if I can open the door. Nice place. Put your luggage. Bathroom. desk, TV, coffee maker, mini fridge stocked with things that they would charge me for, so I'm not using any of that stuff. And then my view of the Berlin Zoo. That was the way I came from, from the train station. And then you see the Intercontinental right there. That's where my conference is. So I'm very close to the conference, but at a fraction of the price. See the giraffe. Here I am, my very first stop in Berlin is the Reichstag, which is their the seat of German government, the heart of German government. Um, think of it similar to the U.S. House of Representatives. I did get tickets to go up in the dome, but not for today. If you see the dome, you can actually maybe see people walking in there, but you have to get tickets ahead of time. It's a, you have to go through security clearance online. It's a whole process. Um, and I was able to secure a time, but it's not until I believe my last day here. It's the only time that I could um, we could get. This is considered the birthplace of the German government, and the saying above the door, "Den Deutschen Vog," is for I believe for the German people is the promise 
of the German government inscribed over the door. There is so much history here. The first government that was formed here was the Weimar Republic. Um, it turned out to not be a strong form of government and it was subject to a lot of other governments that formed such as the Nazi party during World War II. The right side was a popular target for bombing. You can see above the inscription places where the brick has been patched. Um, and then this is also the site where several German soldiers took their last stand against the Soviet Union um, before the so during the Soviet invasion uh, which resulted in East and West Berlin. The Berlin Wall was constructed and was right behind where the Reichstag stands so uh, we will see hopefully some of the former area of the Berlin Wall but it's supposed to be right behind this building where it was originally placed. This is the back side of the Reichstag, and I just crossed Scheidemannstrasse, and now we are on, I get the correct name, because I know I will butcher it, Eberstrasse. This road is where the Berlin Wall used to be, along here. These crosses are a memorial to the victims of the Berlin Wall, East Berliners who uh, were assassinated trying to escape East Berlin into West Berlin. And you can see as we walk ahead, this is the Brandenburg Gate that we're walking toward. The um, Berlin Wall was constructed in 1961 and comprised 96 miles all around the U.S. leaning West Berlin to keep the Soviet controlled East Berliners out of the democratic leaning West Berlin. And there are places where there are still uh, visible signs of where the wall used to be and hopefully we'll find some of those as we're walking along. The Berlin wall is actually two walls. There was an outer wall with barbed wire to discourage people from trying to cross and then there was an interior wall. Between the two walls was an area called No Man's Land. Escapees would um, enter into the No Man's Land area and trip alarms that would alert the guards. And there were several guards um, who would be there to assassinate those who tried to escape. There we are. Oh wow, look at that sky. It's beautiful. The Brandenburg Gate is the most elaborate and the last surviving of the 14 gates that made up the Berlin Wall. This was the gate that led to the neighborhood known as Brandenburg. While I was standing here, the gate just illuminated. The statue at the top with the four horses is driven by, uh, originally when it was designed, it was meant to be the goddess of peace, and then it was changed to the goddess of victory. I'll take some pictures of it illuminated.
so the gate does divide the city east and west and the west um, would be where the tier garden all the way to the Olympic Stadium is and the east would be uh, following under the Linden Street which means under the Linden trees um, and we're probably gonna head that way next just off of the Brandenburg Square is the Hotel Adelon this hotel has quite a bit of fame and history uh, Charlie Chaplin stayed here Albert Einstein stayed here this is also the hotel where Michael Jackson dangled his baby blanket literally his baby's name was blanket um, from the second story balcony and uh, this is also where the um, a famous movie with Greta Garbo Hotel um, Grand Hotel and this is the setting for Grand Hotel. It was filmed here. A uh, famous line from that movie when Greta Garbo says, I want to be alone. Across the street is the memorial to the murdered Jews from World War II. 2,711 coffin-shaped stones representing those who lost their lives due to Nazi occupation. This government sanctioned memorial was not constructed until 2005, many, many years after World War II. Um, calling it a memorial to the murdered Jews was intentional uh, because it recognized that Germany was admitting that crimes were committed against the Jewish people. This takes up an entire city block. I think the architectural choices of the monument are very interesting. As you go into the memorial, you'll notice that the coffins, markers, seem to get bigger and you seem to be sinking down. The land is in a sunken area, so that also as you are working your way out of the memorial, you're constantly going up. So you go up to get out. They are doing some construction. Also, the number 2,711 is not really representative of anything specific. It is just the number that fit in the space. The location of the memorial is significant though. Um, prior to World War II, there was a huge Jewish population that lived in this area. They were all all of them that didn't escape were taken to nearby concentration camps such as, I believe, Sachsenau. It's one of those camps that they were taken to. So the, this memorial is on land where the Jewish people lived prior to World War II. I've climbed up out of the memorial. This is the site we're standing on where Hitler's bunker was, directly below us. That's what that sign is marking. April 30th, 1945, Hitler and his recently wed wife, Eva Braun, took their lives. And the war ended, I believe, a week later. I'm right now in the middle of Under the Linden. This street was the Champs Elysees of Berlin back in the Golden Age. This street was lined with linden trees and therefore the name Under the Linden Tree. The street is full of shops and cafes people enjoying the city and as you can see there's been an effort to return to that. Um, interesting too 
that the linden trees that you see have all been planted since the beginning of World War II when Hitler, Hitler's Nazi party took over. He had all the linden trees chopped down and people were so upset about it that they um, had the trees replanted. This is the Russian embassy. And you see the memorial. It's been put up. And then the sign here. I did take a picture of this. This is from a book. Um, the author Hoffman, E.T.A. Hoffman memorialized the house at Under de Linden 9, which is the site today of the Russian embassy in his fiction. The house was smaller than its neighboring buildings because it dated back to an earlier period and it appeared somewhat run down. Hoffman immortalized it in Das Udhaus in the anthology, and I can't pronounce the anthology, I think, Nachstuck. The house fascinates the first person narrator Theodore so much that he begins to believe the house is haunted. Protect Ukraine, it says. Walking by, I heard someone say, why is the Russian embassy here? Well, remember, where we are right now used to be part of East Germany, which was controlled by the Soviet Union. And Russia was part of the former Soviet Union. So when you think about that, it makes absolute sense that the Russian embassy would be here in the former East Germany. Number 40. Under de Linden used to be, and I don't know, maybe still is, but it's closed if it is, um, the Berlin story, which is a bookstore and museum. This is a statue of Frederick the Great. Across Under de Linden is Humboldt University. Albert Einstein taught here. The Grimm brothers also were students here. Also two dozen Nobel Prize winners studied here. Berlin Library. It's huge. It's stained glass window. Looks like something biblical that you see in a church. It's actually depicting linen in his rise. We're coming up to the memorial here. You can see down there all of the empty bookshelves. It's a memorial. To the book burning that occurred here in this very square in 1933. Faculty and students from the university brought 20,000 books over to this square to be burned, including works by T.S. Eliot and other famous authors as well as scientists like Sigmund Freud. Hotel de Rome, a swanky church that's been around, or a swanky hotel that's been around for a very long time, next to St. Hedwig's Church, and you notice it's kind of tucked away from the main street, um, kind of in a corner, um, and that's a nod to the fact that uh, Catholic churches kind of take a back seat to the Protestant religion in Berlin. Next to St. Hedwig's, we have the Berlin Opera House. All the way back to Under the Linden. This square 
was built by Frederick the Great to highlight and highlight and influence the further enlightenment of people, the furthering of people's intellectual pursuits and freedoms to learn, to grow, to explore. And that was specifically why Hitler chose this location for the book burning. Very symbolic. Here's a nicer view of the opera house. This is the Neue Wache, or New Guard House. So this used to be the guard house for the guards who guard, guarded the palace here. It's been repurposed as a memorial to fallen soldiers of various regimes. And the goddess of victory stands at the top of the um, engraving. And the figure that we saw inside is a mother holding her deceased son. Um, and inside is the um, tomb of an unknown soldier and also the tomb of an unknown concentration camp um, person who died at the concentration camp. I think this is the Froelich House. It's, um, it was a German arsenal. It's now a German military museum. Um, it's designed in the Baroque style. See the underground sign? That's for Museum Island. When we go across the bridge, we'll be on Museum, Museum Island, which is Berlin's historic birthplace. That's a huge linden tree. So, Museum Island, this part of Berlin was a moshy burg um, in, in the 1200s, Berlin was founded. Berlin, the name, is believed to come from a Slavic word for swamp. So Berlin was built on a swamp. This huge structure that I thought was a palace, I think is actually the Kaiser Dome, is the Protestant church, Protestant cathedral. We just crossed the Spree River. From what I have read, remember Berlin was built on the marsh, the marsh, the swamp area, so soft soil, right? So during World War II, all of these bombs were dropped on Berlin. From what I read, one in every ten bombs didn't detonate when it struck. And there are believed to be bombs in the spree that have not detonated yet. So we walked across, across there pretty quickly. Well, I was going to get some food to go and go back to the hotel. But 
right next to here is this little beer garden area restaurant with live music. And the music's pretty good. So I thought, I'm just going to sit here and eat my food. Listen to the American music in Germany. And I got the genre box. So it's basically like um, a hero box without the bread and uh, I think there's fries. There we go. So I think it'll be good. Cool. Oh, look at that. It looks good. So I'm going to dig in and listen to some music.